Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at enthalpy with the process where instead of melting ice, we're going to freeze water into ice. So we're simply going to reverse the process, do exactly the same thing as we did in the previous video, but in the reverse direction. And that hopefully will give us again a better understanding of what enthalpy is. So here we take one mole of water, which has a volume of 18 cubic centimeters, remove heat from that water. So that means we have a negative delta H. When we have a negative delta H, that means it's an exothermic process. Heat is removed from the, from the uh, substance or from the system. And then we turn the water into ice. Therefore, the ice will now have a volume of 19.63 cubic centimeters for a gain of 1.63 cubic centimeters of volume. Notice that this is supposed to be spontaneous because we learned that if delta H is negative, we have an spontaneous process or reaction, but that's not necessarily the case. Note that the spontaneity, I hope that's a proper word, the spontaneity of a process also depends on the temperature. In other words, this process is only spontaneous if the temperature of the environment is less than zero degrees centigrade, then water will naturally freeze from zero degrees centigrade. It will become ice spontaneous, uh, in a spontaneous process. But if the temperature is above zero degrees centigrade, then you need to do work to make it happen. Then it will not be spontaneous. So here we can take a look at the schematic. We start with one mole of water, water liquid state, so H2O in liquid state, and we turn into one mole of ice. So solid water, H2O, in a solid state by removing 6.01 kilojoules or 6,010 kilojoules. So heat is removed from the system, delta H, the change in enthalpy is therefore negative. Notice that in our PV diagram, we now go from left to right. That means the volume increases, the delta V is a positive quantity, and therefore the work done by the system is equal to P times delta V, and since P is the pressure of the atmosphere and delta V is now a positive quantity, it will now, now be a positive 0.165 joules of work done by the system. How does that fit into the equation of enthalpy? The change in enthalpy is equal to the change in internal energy plus P delta V. Again, P delta V is the work done by the system. And so we can see that delta H is a minus 6,010 joules and that P delta V is now a positive 0.165 joules. If we solve this for delta U by moving this to the other side of the equation, turn the equation around, delta U is equal to minus 6,010 joules minus 0.165 joules, which means that delta U is now minus 6,010.165 joules. In other words, even though we removed 6,010 joules from the system, the internal energy dropped by, a, dropped by a greater amount, by an additional 0.165 joules, because not only was heat removed, turning water into ice, also since the, uh, since the substance, water expands upon freezing, it had to push against the atmosphere, push atmosphere away. That required work, which required additional energy, which means the amount of heat lost by the, by the system, the change in internal energy, was even greater than the heat removed via enthalpy, it also required additional heat to push against the atmosphere for total change in internal energy being equal to the change in enthalpy plus the work done by the system. So in essence, we have the delta U here, which is equal to the delta H plus the work done by the system. So P times delta, I should write a delta V. So you can see that the change in internal energy is both the heat removed from the system plus the work done by the system combined is the total change in internal energy. As you can see that delta H and delta U is not necessarily the same thing. If there was a change in volume, they will not be the same. And that's how we can tell the difference.